hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to just sit down and talk about my favorite thing, which is vintage bags. I recently got a new vintage bag at the Manhattan Vintage Show and so I think now I have a well-rounded collection, enough to really sit down and talk through each bag that I have. I have seven bags here and then maybe at the end we can talk about a few a few that I have on my on my wish list, a few I have my eye on. So let's just get right into it because I have a feeling that this is gonna be a long-winded video because I just, this is something I'm very passionate about. I was gonna go in the order that I got them, but honestly, I don't remember. So I think I'm gonna go from the youngest bag to the oldest bag that I have. And so we're gonna start out with this Coach. This is the Coach Soho bag and they introduced this silhouette in 2006. So it's not quite vintage. It's almost vintage. She's still, she's still got a, a couple of years to go, but um, I feel like this bag is kind of like quintessential Y2K vibes. I see this a lot on like the Depop girlies. So I had originally actually gotten this silhouette, but it was even smaller. It was almost like a wristlet and it didn't have as much structure to it. And it wasn't my favorite. I got it for $15 at the flea market on Oahu in Hawaii when I lived there. It just wasn't my favorite. So I sold it on Poshmark. I actually sold it very fast. I was shocked. And then about a year ago, I was home and I, whenever I'm home in Wisconsin, I am scrolling on Facebook Marketplace. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you know I love Facebook Marketplace. So it's like a love hate, right? Because the stuff you can find on Marketplace is just so next level good. But then the communication on Marketplace makes me want to die. Like having to arrange a pickup with a seller is literally like pulling teeth. It's like, did you want to sell this item or not? Like some of these people just cannot make a plan. And so I saw this bag on Marketplace and I was like, ooh, I had kind of been thinking about the bag that I sold and I was like, oh, it'd be kind of nice to have. Like, I don't know. It's like a little, it's, it's like a little going out bag kind of, but I, it was a little bit bigger and a little bit more structured. So I was like, maybe I like this more if not I can just always sell it on Poshmark so I messaged this lady and she's like cool I won't be home I'm gonna leave a big plastic tote on my front porch just come get it and I was like okay it was like the most midwestern interaction ever we pulled to this house and there's this ginormous tote in a ring camera facing the tote and so I'm like waving and I'm like have this envelope with money in it I'm like here's the money <laughs> I put it in the tote and in the tote there's like 17 bags in this tote there's so many bags so she's just so she's just like at work all day and just selling purses through her front porch so I paid $20 for this bag and I have grown to really really love it. A lot of people ask how you can tell if something is vintage or how to how to date your item and a lot of the times I'll, I'll either use Google Lens, just take a snapshot of the purse and then it'll kind of help you determine what the bag is called, like this is the the Coach Soho and then you can just Google like when did the Coach Soho come out um, and so this one was originally like 2006. Every authentic Coach bag has a plaque in it, it's like this leather pad plastered inside and so you can always look up the serial number and that's also how to avoid counterfeits, to how to avoid fakes. Even the fakes will have the serial number but when you type it in online, nothing will pop up and that's how you know it's a fake one. Because with every serial number, there should be like, this is the Willis, this is the Whitney, this is the Soho, like it will tell you. You can also use the serial number to kind of determine when the bag was made. So kind of different because for each area, there was a different serial number for, so for example, for this bag, they used this style of dating from 2000 to 2014. And so my numbers are H0779. And so that 07 is the year. So this bag was manufactured in 2007. And then the second part of the serial number has an F and that means factory. So sometimes if it has a P that means it was a pilot bag, which is the first kind of run of bags that they made in that collection. And then sometimes they have a different marking for like an outlet bag. But this one has F, so this was like an original coach in the store around 2007. They originally introduced it in 06. This bag also has, some of my bags have the tag, some of them don't. I love to find them with the tag, but sometimes you don't get so lucky. And so whenever I see this, um, sometimes if you buy online too, if they have this, they will be a little bit pricier. One more little trick to tell if your coat is vintage or not, and probably like from the 90s or further, is the inside of the bag. So the inside of this bag is cloth. They started doing the cloth linings in around 2000. And so just from that, I knew that this was more of like, you know, a Y2K kind of bag. I really like this one because it's so small. It just fits in like the crevice. It's like a true little mini shoulder bag. And I didn't think I would like this because I, 
usually wear a bag crossbody, and so I thought that this might be a little bit hard to, like I just was afraid, what if it slips off and I have to carry it? But this will stay here all day. It's like the perfect little baguette. It's like so cute. I also, this is kind of like my date night kind of go-to, or this weekend I'm I'm uh, going to a bar for the first time in New York City. No, well, not like a bar for the first time, but <laughs> my friends and I are going like dancing, and it's the first time I've been anywhere like, a, like I've never been to a proper club or like dance area so <laughs> what are they called dance place i've never been out dancing so i'm very excited but i didn't want to bring one of my leather bags just in case it like i don't know when someone bumps into me or like spills on me uh whereas this one it's old i love it but i'm not as like emotionally attached to it as the other bags and this leather is a bit more sturdy a bit more shiny and so it's, it's just easier to clean so so if this was to get damaged i would be sad but i wouldn't be like throwing up because I'm so upset, like I would be with one of my vintage ones. So when I'm, you know, out and about with the girls doing a little, little fun drinks, I, I will bring this bag. So that's my first one I wanted to talk about. She's not super old, but she's cute nonetheless. The next bag I have to talk about, also I don't really believe it's vintage. It's not that old. I've seen it on Poshmark a couple times as a vintage bag, but I really have no idea how old it is. And that's because this is a fossil. So I, Coach is like my bread and butter. I have a lot of Coach and I have one Duty and Burke and then this fossil one, it's just kind of random. It's just this, and you've seen it. I've talked about it on this channel before. I got this in Hawaii from a thrift store for $15. I love it so much and it's so funny because when I bought it I feel like this happens a lot with me a lot of the stuff that I end up absolutely loving so much when I first get it I'm like oh I don't know like should I have gotten that like was that a mistake and that's how I felt about this because $15 is kind of a lot when you're at like a true Salvation Army thrift store you know what I mean you're like I'm expecting to spend five dollars so I was like oh <laughs> big ticket item <laughs> but I yeah I'm so glad I did because this well when I was working retail this was my work bag because it fits so much in there and then sometimes I bring this uh, to my job now because it fits my laptop it fits everything I also kind of like to use this in in lieu of a tote bag I think that tote bags have kind of they've got like a very 2020 look you know, like it's it's a, it's a very casual look and like I'll still use a tote bag as my bag but I think to elevate the outfit a little bit, this is essentially a tote bag but it's leather, you know what I mean? So it's just, it's it gives, yeah, there's like that little, little kick in your outfit, just up it a notch. I love how worn it is. I mean, this thing is like so worn in. I keep saying I need to like restain it and get some like uh, leather lotion and just give it some TLC, which I definitely do but I also, yeah, I just, I love the nature of it. Like it's got a few stains on it. And the reason why this isn't so vintage, like I said, it has this um, cloth lining on the inside. I would assume that this is also like 2006 to 2008 era. It's just so yummy. It's so delicious. It's like this really soft, I mean, you can see it's just like this buttery leather. I've also said in videos before that this is my Birkin. <laughs> like I just use her. I use her so much and I'm so happy I bought her. I'm extremely satisfied. There's also a ton of these on Poshmark, the, the exact same bag for like 20 bucks, which I feel like is so good for a leather tote. If you bought a leather tote like this nowadays, it'd be like $300. These bags are so much more interesting than anything you could get new in store today, especially for that price, like $20 for a real leather tote bag that fits everything. It's got so much character. It brings so much warmth to your outfit. It's just so much more impressive and so much cooler than anything you can get new. When I talked about things that make you instantly stylish, I talked about like worn in leather, worn in clothes. That's it for me. I don't know. Sometimes designer bags, they just look too polished. I, like give me this rugged, like just worn in goodness. <laughs> okay, now we can get into the true vintage. This is the Coach Ergo flat bag. And this one came out either in 1997 or 1998 because I also have an Ergo mini that came out in 1997. I don't know if they were part of the same collection or if they came out a little bit later from each other. Okay, I just did a little bit of a deep dive on this serial number because these had a different serial number than the Soho bag, like the formatting was different, but this one was made in 1998. This one was the first true vintage bag I got. I bought this in Milwaukee actually, down in the third ward there is, I think it's called like Retique, and it's like Goodwill's version of like a boutique. Basically they just take out all the good stuff and hike it up and put it in like fancy Goodwill. It is a cute store though, and this was $50. And if you know, 
that's a pretty dang good deal. And this was really before I got into coach, like I knew the different styles and stuff. I still don't know everything that there's a lot to learn and it's just like a fun little hobby I have. But this was, I, I just like knew I wanted a vintage bag and that was it. I didn't know anything about the styles or what makes one more coveted than the other. I didn't know anything about like identifying fake ones. I just saw this and was like, I feel like I need to have that. It's this really gorgeous black leather. This is, a really like thick leather. What's unique about this bag compared to my other ones is just like the thickness of this strap and I really, really love that. It also hits me at a great spot when I wear it crossbody. My only qualm is that I can't wear this in the winter over my coats because it is a little bit of a shorter strap. So over my coat, it just looks a little silly and it's like too bulky, but in the summertime, I love this spring, fall, all that stuff. I can also wear it on one shoulder like with my jacket, but I do prefer to wear it crossbody. This one is missing the little coach, little tag. It's supposed to be like a really thick chain around here, but I actually don't think I would like that look. So I'm okay with it being missing on this bag. I think it would just look a little odd to have the chain around such a thick strap. But yeah, this is the one that started it all. I was just obsessed, especially with the quality. Leather, it's kind of like, as long as you don't cut leather, it just gets better with age. It wears in, it becomes beautiful, and you can like buff things out. You can restain it. It just lasts so long. And I think that's another reason why I'm so obsessed with vintage bags is because they look so good for so long. And the type of leather that was used from like the 80s to the late 90s is just beyond. So not much else I can say about that. She's just gorgeous. She's a great daily. This isn't like the most exciting bag, but I find myself wearing it a lot. I also like this little like tuck it has, the corners. That's kind of like a trademark of the Ergo bag. I definitely think this has like a 90s minimalist kind of look to it. Carolyn Bessett Kennedy would rock the hell out of this bag. That's all I gotta say. Okay, let's move on to the Coach Mini Ergo. I also didn't know that these were like extremely rare and these sell for a lot of money, which I'm surprised because there's so many. So I was on the phone with my mom and she was at a thrift store. I had been talking about how I wanted a small vintage coach because at the time, this is the only one that I had. And she's like, oh, like this one that I just found, she bought this for $11. What? 11 this is also missing the little coach tag, but for $11, who even cares? I actually wear this bag with this top a lot. This also is just a perfect little shoulder. I feel so darling in this. Whenever I wear this one, I feel like cutesy girl vintage, if you know what I mean. I feel like a little school teacher right now. Who's the teacher from Matilda? That's what I feel like I look like. Let's go class. Come on class. We're gonna go pick apples. Didn't I make a teacher reference a couple of videos ago about going to the carrot farm. In my fantasy where I'm a teacher, apparently I just love vegetation. <laughs> you can see that she's also got that nice little tuck at the corners. So sexy. <laughs> just the craftsmanship is next level. I also like this interesting like tuck to die for. This also has a leather interior. It has like one little tiny pocket, but otherwise it's just mostly open. They have this guy in so many cool colors. I, all of my bags that I have are neutrals, brown, cream, black, and I, I'll show you some pictures at the end. I am dying for a colorful one but they, they're pricey, they're a pretty penny. But I believe they make this in like a green and then they also make this in like this just gorgeous sea foam blue. And I just love it. I feel like it doesn't look that exciting, but to me, this is just everything. It's extremely exciting. And I think I just get a little thrill every time I wear it. Cause I'm like, this is $11. Like, can you believe? Can you believe? That's absolute lunacy. Oh my God. All right, this next bag I got at the Upper West Side Bazaar in New York City. This is my Mary Poppins bag. We've got my, Birkin, and then we've got my Mary Poppins. <laughs> when I tell you, there is no limit to what can fit in here. I see everybody talking about the bagu. Oh, look what it, look at everything that can fit in my bagu. Look at everything that can fit in my Coach Whitney bag, girl. The Coach Whitney came out in 1991, making her sexy debut. <laughs> it is essentially like a really cool bucket bag with this big flap. Again, that nice leather interior. This one does have the little coach tag. Unfortunately, David, she has split. I'm just gonna get some like maybe leather glue or something that kind of just 
We are back together. It's got a nice crossbody strap. You can also adjust it. I have it on the shortest setting because it does come pr down pretty far. Oh, another thing to note is that this is our first coach that I've showed you with the brass like buckles. Vintage coach uses 100% brass and so it's never going to like fully tarnish. You can always shine it up and make it good again. This is my daily bag. I bring this to nannying every day because I can fit a water bottle in it. I can fit a book, my wallet, sunglasses, hand sanitizer, literally everything. Yeah, I literally have a book in there right now. A really, a really fun read. I'm kidding. This is the bane of my existence. What I like about this is, well, I do love the flap because most of the time I just keep it open. It's pretty much always on me. So I like that the flap kind of keeps it closed, but I still have easy access because it's unzipped. You can zip it. And then there's another like front pocket. It's just this gorgeous brown color. And yeah, like I said, it's, it's so big. You can fit literally anything in here. That's actually the main reason I bought this bag is because it was summertime and none of my bags could fit a water bottle, which was such a hassle. So I could never bring my own water with me if, unless I wanted to carry it all day or, you know, I'd have to go buy like a $5 water out if I was in like, an expensive part of town. This has also just weaseled her way into my everyday life. When I first got this, I wasn't so sure like of how obsessed I would be with it. I knew I would like it because it served a really good function in my wardrobe, but I'm obsessed with her. I love her so much. It goes really well with any outfit. It also goes well over a jacket. Just really stunning. I believe the Whitney is pretty accessible. It's not as rare as the mini Ergos or the bigger Ergos. I really need to look up how to say that. I fear I'm saying it wrong, but it's E-R-G-O. So Ergo would just make the most sense to me. But yeah, the Whitney, I believe you can find on Poshmark, eBay, Etsy for around 120 to 150. The seller that I, I don't think she, she never has a business card. I don't think she has an Instagram, but she's always at the Upper West Side Bazaar. I believe that's only on Sundays. And then I just saw her recently at the Manhattan Vintage Show. I don't see her at the Dumbo Flea. So yeah, Upper West Side Flea, She's the lady with all the purses. Can't miss her. Really, really reasonable prices. My mom bought two bags from her. Now I've bought two bags from her. She'll even take little notes about what you're on the hunt for. Like a couple months ago, she texted me a picture of a red coach because I told her I'm on the hunt for a red coach. So she texted me a picture. It wasn't like the style I was wanting, but I think that's like really sweet, really cool. That's something I like about the vintage handbag collector community is everybody gets really excited about them and people that you meet, little like vendors and everything, they're so nice. I think it's really cool too to see what people collect because everybody collects something different. I have a ton of coach, like coach is my bread and butter. My mom has a ton of Dooney. I don't even know if she has a coach. She like only collects Dooney, which is funny because I really love Dooney, but I only have one, I only have one Dooney. Also funny, every time I text Dooney, I'll text my mom because Dooney and Burke is kind of long to text out. So I'll just text Dooney and every once in a while it'll autocorrect to donkey. And I just think that's funny. I wanted to share. Can you believe we're only one cup of coffee in? I'm not even finished with this cup. I'm usually like two cups by now. That's why I'm so absolutely manic in some of my videos. I'm like, <laughs> but I'm saving that second cup because I'm going to edit this today. You're seeing this next day. Okay. I'm filming and editing all in one day because I'm a rock star. Okay, and then speaking about Dooney and Burks, my next bag is this Dooney and Burke. This is the all weather leather collection. And this is just known as the square carrier. These came out in the 1980s, but mine is from the 1990s. And the way that you can tell is on the inside, pull out my little t-shirts I have in here. On the inside, there's a tiny little tag that will say Dooney and Burke Incorporated. And the ones that were made in the 80s say Dooney and Burke Incorporated made in the USA or USA, something like that. The ones that were made in the 90s do not have that USA because at first I was like, oh my God, did I buy a fake? No, just a different decade. And then underneath the tag, it'll say assembled in Costa Rica. These also have a leather interior, but they're not as beautiful as the coach leather interiors. Like look at how much nicer the inside of the coach looks. I feel like, right? It just, it looks softer, more supple. The color is all even. The Dooney and Burks, the inside of the Dooney and Burks can get a little dingy looking pretty fast. And so I find that it's harder to find Dooney's in good condition. I've seen a lot of them at flea markets, bazaars, whatever, and they are absolutely wrecked because let me tell you what, these women, in the 80s and 90s, they just threw their pens and their coal eyeliners in there loose. No caps. And <laughs> so a lot of vintage Doonies have a ton of pen marks. They'll have lipstick bleeding, ink blots all over the inside, which honestly, it doesn't bother me that much as long as you're getting a good deal for it because sometimes people <laughs> will have a Dooney that is in that condition and they're still charging like 150 for it. And I'm like, 
maybe like $50. It really does knock a lot off of the value. But this one I got for Christmas from my mom and I actually had it hearted on my Poshmark and I showed it to her because she is also collecting these. And so I know that it was $90, which is insane, insane for this because this thing is as if she's never seen the light of day. The inside is just immaculate condition. So this line of Duty and Burks is the all weather leather, which is a waterproof leather, which I think is really super cool. You'll notice that anything that is an all weather leather has the little duck. Oh, and I love birds. So that's another reason why I love Duty and Burks. And it's so funny too. I remember my mom, one of my mom's birthdays. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was her birthday. My dad got her a Duny and Burke bag. And that was like, it was a new one. It wasn't a vintage one, but he got her a new Duny and Burke. It was like a little, it was almost like a crescent moon bag. And my mom cried. I remember that. And I remember the little dongle thing. This guy, this is how they looked, you know, vintage. They have a little duck but the one on hers was a little blue. They did like this Tiffany blue on the ducks for a while. And I just, yeah, I don't know. I just remember that. I remember her crying and I remember being like, oh my gosh, okay, dad. Okay, okay, dad. Damn, <laughs> you really you really killed it this year. So I think I have just that like memory of, of Dooney and Burke in my brain. And so I think that's why, that's another reason why I love them so much. I just have like this fond memory of Dooney and Burke being like the bag. I feel like if you came from like a middle-class family, Dooney and Burke was like luxury. You know what I mean? Like my parents weren't buying like Gucci and Chanel, but like the Dooney and Burke bag was like, <laughs> it was, it was everything. Not me having a sentimental tie of my parents and their love for each other while talking about a vintage purse. So this is the all weather leather. This is the square carrier. It comes in three sizes, an original like big rectangle, a smaller rectangle, which I guess is the most rare to find. I see them all the time though. And then this square one, which personally I like the square the best. Actually, none of these are really like sideways rectangles. This Whitney is probably the closest to a rectangle, but it's pretty square. No, this is a square. What am I talking about? Yeah, not really a fan of like the long ones. I'll put a picture so you know what I'm talking about. I don't really love this silhouette. I just, I don't know. I just don't like it. I'm not drawn to it the way I'm drawn to this, this cute little square. Oh my God. They have this all weather leather. Again, this is, I need to do a little bit more research on Duty and Burks too, because they don't have the serial numbers like the coach does. I think that's why the coach is so fascinating to me because you can really track exactly when it was made, where it was made, what exact year. Every bag has a very specific name. Like I like that they all have names like the Whitney, the Willis, you know, whereas this is just like the carrier bag. So it's not as specific. They do have a carrier bag that I've seen that has a different little latch. It's like, it looks like almost like a belt latch. I love this little twisty brass detail. This is the one that I prefer. My mom also has this bag in, it's like a black and then a dark brown and girl, of course I want that too. But my next one is going to be a colored one. Like I have to get the colored one. So this does come in a couple different colors. This is the cream. It's just so gorgeous. Like even you can see this leather, it's like never been scratched. It's just... So gorge, of course, got the little, little duck key fob thing. This does have a thinner strap. I am usually gravitated towards a thicker strap, but on this bag, I think that the thinner strap works. And it's also got fun yellow stitching. I don't know if you can really see it on there. Just super cool. I feel like this is the one that feels the most vintage in my mind. Like you might, you might look at this one, like the Whitney, you might look at the mini Ergo and not realize the significance of the bag. Like this to the average eye might just be like, oh, that's like just any old black leather bag. But I feel like when you see a bag like the Carrier, that sticks out as vintage, at least in my mind. Absolutely love that you can hold it like this. I feel like it's very kitschy, it's very fun. It looks like a little briefcase. So cute, very like, it's giving very, 2012's Twee, like Zoe De Chanel, Jessica Decor, which you know I'm all about. Yeah, I just, I don't know. Like, I just feel like all modern bags, they just aren't as fun as this. And these are a fraction of the cost. And the leather is so much better, especially this all weather leather. This is like tough leather. Some of the coaches have a more supple leather, but even those leathers are pretty tough. These are a dime a dozen on Poshmark as well. So I would love to open up like a bag store, maybe an online store. Maybe that's something that I'll do like in the future because I do love selling on Poshmark, but I don't, I don't know, like the format of it is just kind of, it's just not my favorite. And so I don't know, my mom and I have been toying around with making a website, like a vintage website. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. I don't know, but I often see 
bags either on Poshmark for super cheap or on Facebook Marketplace that need a lot of TLC. And I just think it'd be really cool to like rehabilitate these vintage coach and doonies because it's just like what I'm so passionate about. So maybe in the future, maybe that's something I could do. I feel like toying with the idea. Let me, let me know your thoughts. Okay, we have one bag left. Oh my God. Save the best for last. I hope you're still here. Comment, comment. What should we comment? Comment a little tulip emoji if you're still here in the spirit of spring. I got this last weekend at the Manhattan Vintage Show. It was my first time going. So, so fun. And I will never be missing another one for as long as I live here. First of all, I shared this to my story and I said that this is the Coach Willis bag. And for that, I apologize. I should not be spreading misinformation like that because this is indeed the Coach Station bag. Uh, my mom told me that because she actually does have a Coach Willis. She has the Coach Willis in black. The Coach Willis bag is massive. So this is the Coach Station bag. All right, so I got this from the same vendor that I got my Coach Whitney from, the Upper West Side Bazaar vendor. She was at the show and I was like, hey girl, I know you. <laughs> And I was not planning on buying a bag, was not planning on buying a bag whatsoever. I looked at her little booth and I saw this and I was like, shut it, shut up. Because obviously you can tell I love, I love a little purse briefcase. They're so dang cute. I tried this on and then I was like, I don't need this. Like I, maybe I'll think about it. You know, I'll loop back around and like, I'll think about it. I went to put it back. I couldn't let it go. <laughs> so I tried it on again and I was like, no, 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 no. I'll have to think about it. Went to put it back. There was a ton of people shopping on her shelf. And I was like, if I put this down, someone's going to buy this. I have to, I have to get it. <laughs> so she had it marked for 165 and I asked her if she would do 150 and she said, yes, these typically in this condition, these can go up to $300. So I felt like 150 was extremely reasonable. It's got the cutest little turn. Again, I love that. It has the little coach tag. And you guys, this one as well, it's just like whoever owned this just never wore it. It's got a front pocket and it's got the main pocket. So cute. So the difference between this and the Willis bag, like I said, this is the station bag, came out in 1983. I'm not sure which one came out first, like the Willis or the station, but the Willis is like double this size and then it has like a dowel. It has like a like a little dowel here that the handle attaches to and this one just attaches flush onto the top. This is my only chocolatey brown. I like to stick with this more, yeah, this more like tan cognac brown. And I, don't regret it one bit. This is so, so stunning. So cute, the perfect size. Obviously I'm not gonna be able to like put a water bottle in this or anything, but it's just so darling. It is so darling. And I've been wanting a coach one like this. Of course I have the Dooney that is that top carrier, but the coach is just so iconic. I believe that this shade was originally called the mocha color. It comes in a few different styles. Yeah, it's just this really great, it's like a chocolatey espresso brown with like just like a hint of like a red velvet color. I think it looks really good with this top too because this top has little um, bits of dark brown in it. I actually, even though I feel like this is more of a fall winter bag, I do think I'm gonna get a lot of use out of this in the summer. I mean, like just imagine me walking around in a cute little cotton dress with this, some red ballet flats in Central Park. Main character, mama, main character. Also what I find interesting about the uh, station bag is it has these lobster claws for the strap. I just think that's really cool. I like the detachable straps. The Dooney, they do not come off. So it's just hooked on there. I think it's kind of nice to have the option if you did want to go for a thicker strap or maybe like a chain or something cool, you could switch it out. This is just gonna look so cute with like a little vintage scarf tight on it. So excited to rock this. Like I said, I like just got this, so I haven't worn it out yet. She's gorgeous, she's beautiful. She's everything I could ever want. Okay, and that's my last bag out of seven of my vintage bags. I would consider five of them to be true vintage and those first two I just kind of wanted to show because they're interesting. They're about to be vintage, but they were also secondhand. So just kind of showing you that maybe if this vintage style of bag isn't really your style, you can find a lot of great bags at the thrift. Oh yes, and I did want to show you a couple that are on my wish list. Okay, I'm gonna scoot over here so you can, so I can put the pictures here. So one that has kind of recently come onto my radar is the Coach Winnie. These are a vintage coach that are very small. They're very cute. They've kind of got the essence of a Winnie, but they're a little bit smaller and you can see they have that dowel on the top. So kind 
of like a Willis, but s small because like I said, the Willis is really big, almost, almost too big. It feels a little clunky. This next back is really rare. So unless I like win the lottery or something, <laughs> either uh, financially or metaphorically like at the thrift, don't think I'll be getting this one for a very long time. And this is just anything in the lime green color, specifically this Maggie, the vintage Maggie duffel in lime green. So so cute. Yeah, here's one on Poshmark. It's in immaculate condition for $450. But honestly, me justifying it, honestly though, if you think about how much you would spend on like a Chanel bag, that's like five to $10,000. So 450 really isn't even that bad. And then the same bag, the Maggie bag comes in this light blue color. Here it is on Poshmark for $350. They have done a couple other bags in this color as well. But yeah, like I said, God, this, this little duffel is so, so cute. It's kind of got the same vibe as my Whitney. Also, like, you know, like I'd be able to, you know, I'd be able to just like throw a water bottle in there, a book, whatever. Sometimes you can find really good deals on eBay because a lot of people don't really know what they have. So they'll sell it for cheaper, maybe like a hundred, two hundred dollars. So maybe I can find, yeah, either the blue or the lime green. Those are kind of on my wish list for coaches. I think I've got a really nice mix of these more neutral, tones, especially now with the addition of the chocolate brown one. I have black, brown, dark brown. So I would love to add some colors. So the lime green and that light blue are super high up on my list. I also really love red coaches, but I think I actually want a red Dooney instead in the all weather leather. I have this one saved on Poshmark that I really, really love. This one's $8. It's the all weather leather. It's almost like a small bucket. It's kind of like an oval shape. And then it's got, it's just like really bright red. Something about this shape, I was just really loving. This might be like late nineties, I would say. And then I also really love, this is like a true bucket from Dooney. Stunning. Yeah, I have the red one hearted on Poshmark. It's $275, but they also come in just like a nice tan. And then the last little thing that I think is really fun are these vintage Dooney and Burks. They're like coin purses, but you can wear them like wrapped around your waist or you can just wear them crossbody and like it would only fit like your wallet, but I just, there's something really charming about them. Really super cute. They usually are a little bit pricey too, like a hundred bucks for a really, really small it's almost like a wallet just with a you know chain strap to it so that's the reason i haven't gotten one of those just because for a hundred i'd rather get like an actual big bag but eventually once i've really flushed out my collection and gotten all of the bigger ticket items maybe i'll get one of these okay and that's everything that i've kind of got my eye on yeah definitely definitely want to add a colored one very soon but i'm running out of places to store these <laughs> I, yeah, like I said, I do like to keep old t-shirts or whatever rolled up inside of them so that they um, store nicely. And then I just keep them in tote bags as dust bags. Cause I feel like, I feel like everywhere I go, I just get a tote bag. How many tote bags can I realistically use? So I uh, end up using the tote bags as dust bags for these. So I hope you enjoyed. Let me know which one was your favorite. Let me know if you have any. Let me know if you have any vintage bag that you're kind of stuck on. I know some people just stick with one silhouette and they collect like all the colors. I don't really see that being me. Like I don't think I'd only collect the Willis bag and get it in like 10 different colors. I like, I like a nice variety of shapes and colors and brands. Well, not brands, I guess, since I mostly have coach, but I would like to get more into Dooney. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I probably won't be as active on here until about May. I've been kind of posting every other week, which is such a bummer because I really want to be posting every week, but it's just impossible with school. And the first week of May is my final week and then we have the whole summer free so thanks for sticking around and thanks for watching my other videos in the meantime when i am not like actively uploading it really helps me out but otherwise that's it for me thanks for watching and i'll see you in my next one